Hi there, welcome to Ether. In this last session on Amazon Web Services, we'll talk about identity and access management, another very important and powerful feature from Amazon Web Services. In this session, we'll discuss in detail about identity and access management, its features, how to access IAM, how does it work and its components involved. We'll discuss in detail about IAM policies and the various types of policies. How do we define them? We'll talk about users, groups and their roles. At the end, we will all move to the lab sessions to understand in identity and access management completely. So let's begin with our session. See, in enterprise IT, it is all about defining and managing the roles and access privileges of individual network users and the circumstances in which users are granted or denied those privileges. The core objective of IAM system is one identity per individual. Once that digital identity has been established, it must be maintained, modified and monitored throughout each user's access lifecycle. AWS Identity and Access Management is a powerful and flexible web service for controlling access to AWS resources. Enterprises use identity management basically to safeguard their information assets against the rising threats of ransomware, criminal hacking, phishing and other malware attacks. IAM enables customers to leverage the agility and efficiency of the cloud while maintaining secure control of their organization's AWS infrastructure. Access management systems provide administrators with the tool and technologies to change a user's role, track user's activities, create reports on those activities, and enforce policies on an ongoing basis. These systems are designed to provide a means of administrating users' access across an entire enterprise and to ensure compliance with corporate policies and government regulations. IAM has many uh, important features. It has a shared access to your AWS account, meaning that it grants other people permission to administer and use resources in your AWS accounts without having to share your password or access key. Here each user can be granted. Here each user can be granted with different set granular permissions as required to perform their job. IAM can help provide applications running on EC2 instances with temporary credentials that they need in order to access other AWS resources. See here IAM allows user to access AWS resources without requiring the user to have accounts with AWS by providing temporary credentials. Here CloudTrail can be used to receive log records and include information about those who made request for the resources in the account. Further, IAM supports the processing, storage and transmission of credit card data by a merchant or a service provider and has been validated as being payment card industry data security standard compliant, integrated with many AWS services. So basically, IAM integrates with almost all the AWS services. IAM, like many other AWS services, is eventually consistent and achieves high availability by replicating data across multiple servers with Amazon's data centers around the world. Hence, changes made to IAM would be eventually consistent and would take some time to reflect. IAM is offered at no additional charge and charges are applied only for use of other AWS products by users of IAM. IAM provides security token service, which is an included feature of AWS account offered at no additional charge. AWS only charges for the use of AWS services accessed by AWS security token service temporary security credentials. In order to understand the working and accessing of IAMs, let's see. IAM can be accessed as console is a browser-based interface to manage IAM and AWS resources. AWS command line tools are also used to issue commands at your system's command line to perform IAM and AWS tasks. Command line tools can be faster actually and more convenient than the console. They are useful in case you want to build scripts that perform AWS tasks. It provides two uh, sets of command line tools, AWS command line interface and the AWS tool for Windows PowerShell. Since AWS provides software development kits that consists of libraries and sample code for various programming language and platforms, the SD's SDKs provide a convenient way to create programmatic access to IAM and AWS. Let's take an example. The SDKs take care of tasks such as cryptographically signing requests, managing errors and retrying requests automatically. IAM HTTP's API user can access IAM and AWS programmatically by using the IAM HTTPS API. 
which allows the user to issue HTTPs request directly to the service. When user uses the HTTP APIs, he must he or she must include code to digitally sign request using credentials. Further, basically, IAM provides the infrastructure which is necessary to control authentication and authorization for your account and includes the following items. We'll understand these items one by one. These are principal request and action. So, principal is basically administrative IAM user is the first principal and takes an action on AWS resource users and services can be later on allowed here all user roles federated users and applications are all aws principles whereas request is to access aws console the aws api or the aws cli principal sends a request to aws a request will have information like actions basically operations that the principal wants to perform resources upon which the actions are performed and principal information including the environment from which the request was made. The principle which is the requester here is determined based on the authorization data. Also the environment data such as IP addresses, user agent, SSL enabled status or the time of the day. This information is determined from the request. And lastly, the resource data or data related to the resource that is being requested. After the information collected by request, AWS gathers this information into a request.context which is used further to evaluate and authorize the request. Hence, in authentication process, in order to authenticate from the console, you must sign in with your username and password. And to authenticate from API or CLI, you must provide user access key and secret key. During authorization, IAM uses values from the request.context to check for matching policies and determine whether to allow or deny the request. Policies are stored in IAM as JSON documents and specify the permission that are allowed or denied for principal. IAM checks each policy that matches the context of your request. If a single policy includes a denied action, IAM denies the entire request and stops evaluating. This is called explicit deny. Because requests are denied by default, IAM authorizes your request only if every part of your request is allowed by the matching policies. See the evaluation logic follows these rules. By default, all requests are denied. An explicit allow overrides this default. An explicit deny overrides any allows. Note by default, only the AWS root user has access to all the resources in that account. So if you are not signed in as the root user, then you must have permissions granted by the policy. Further, the actions after your request has been authenticated and authorized. AWS approves the action in your request. Actions are defined by a service and are the things that you can do to a resource, such as viewing, creating, editing, deleting that resource. For example, IAM supports around 40 actions for a user resource includes the following actions like create user, delete user, get user, update user. To allow a principal to perform an action, you must include the necessary actions in a policy that applies to the principal or the affected resource. See here, resource is an entity that exists within a service. Example include an Amazon EC2 instance, an IEM user and S3 bucket. Once the actions are approved, then they are performed on related resources within the account. Further, the service defines a set of actions that can be performed on each resource. If you create a request to perform an unrelated action on a resource, that request is denied. For example, if you request to delete an IAM role but provide an IAM group resource, the request fails. When you provide permission using an identity-based policy in IAM, then you provide permission to access resources only within the same account. If you need to make a request in a different account, the resource in that account must have an attached resource-based policy that allows access from your account. Otherwise, user must assume a role within that account with the permission that you need. We will all understand also all these things again in our lab session.
See, permissions are granted based on the policy. So, a policy is an entity in AWS that when attached to an identity or resource defines their permissions. AWS evaluates these policies when a principal such as a user makes a request. Permission in the policies determine whether the request is allowed or denied. Basically, there are two types of policies. One is identity-based policy and other is resource-based policy. We'll talk about both because on the basis of policy, IAM user roles are decided. So it's very important to know about these policies, when and where to use it. So let's talk first about identity-based policy. Identity-based policies are basically permission policies that user can attach to a principle or identity, such as an IAM user role or group. These policies control what actions that identity can perform on which resources and under what conditions. Identity-based policies can further be categorized into two. One is managed and other is inline policy. So here managed policies are standalone policies that means that the policy has its own Amazon resource name. ARN that can be attached to multiple users, groups and roles in an AWS account and are not applied to the resources. I am identities and technically AWS resources. You cannot attach a resource based policy to an IAM identity. Here points which you need to remember for a managed policies are managed policies allow reusability. Managed policies changes are implemented as versions as new change to the existing policy creates a new version which is useful to compare the changes and revert back if needed. Moving further, we have two subcategories of this managed policy. One is AWS managed policy. These policies are created when managed by AWS. If you are new to using the policies, it is recommended that you start by using AWS managed policies. On the other side, customer managed policies. Managed policies that you create and manage in your AWS account, customer managed policies provide more precise control over your policies than AWS managed policies. User can create and edit an IAM policy in the visual editor or by creating the JSON policy document directly. The inline policy whereas that you create and manage that are embedded directly into a single user, group or role. Deletion of an entity, basically user, group or role or resource, deletes the inline policy as well. So these are identity based policies. So further our next is resource based policies. Let's see what are they. Resource based policies are JSON policy documents that is attached to a resource such as Amazon S3 bucket. These policies control what action specified principal can perform on that resource and under what condition. Resource based policies are inline policies and there are no managed resource based policies. The points which are important to remember about policy. Policies are stored as JSON documents attached to principal as identity based policies or resource based policies, which is a document basically that defines permissions. For writing policy in JSON, you don't need to know JSON. You can create JSON by tools available on internet. You can use any tool to create JSON. So let's again look at the what is contained in a policy. See, a policy documents include affect whether the policy allows or denies access. It contains action, the list of actions that are allowed or denied by the policy. Resource, the list of resources on which the action can occur. The condition, the circumstances under which the policy grants permission. This field is always an optional field. A policy consists of one or more statement, each of which describes one set of permission. See, IAM policies live with IAM users, IAM groups and IAM roles. Here, IAM user is an entity that is created to represent the person or service that uses it to interact with AWS. For greater security and organization, one can give access to your AWS account to specific users. So here we'll know about what is root user credential. See, when you create an AWS account, you create an AWS account root user identity. When you use to sign in to AWS, you can sign in to AWS management console using this root user identity. That is the email address and the password that you provided when while creating the account. This combination of your email address and password is also called your root user credentials. Whereas I am users are users within your account. Each user have its own password 
for access to the AWS Management Console. You can also create an individual access key for each user so that the, for the user to make programmatic requests to work with resources in your account, access key can also be created. See here, I am user can also be created to generate an access key for an application that runs in your corporate network and needs AWS access. Further, you can federate those users who have a way to be authenticated into AWS. A user who has already logged in replaces his or her existing identity with a temporary identity in your AWS account. And this user can work in AWS Management Console. Similarly, an application that the user is working with can make programmatic requests using permissions that you define. Federation is particularly useful in the cases if your users already have identities in a corporate directory, if your corporate directory is compatible with security assertion markup language, you can configure your corporate directory to provide single sign-on access to the AWS Management Console for your users. Further, if your corporate directory is not compatible with security assertion markup language, then create an identity broker application to provide single sign-on access to AWS Management Console for your users. In case your corporate directory is Microsoft Active Directory, then you can use AWS Directory Service to establish trust between your corporate directory and AWS. In case your users already have internet identities, then if you're creating a mobile app or a web-based app, then that can let uh, users identify themselves through an internet identity provider like login with Amazon, Facebook, Google or any other open ID connect. Compatible identity provider, the app can use federation to access AWS. Permissions are granted through policies. It is a centralized way to configure and manage a set of permissions that are created and then attached to user groups or roles. By default, IAM user cannot access anything in your account. See here, IAM groups are the collection of IAM user. Here, user assigns uh, permission to IAM group. All IAM users in the group inherit those permissions. Implicit delay of permissions applies to IAM groups as well. Whereas in IAM roles, define the permission much like an IAM user. IAM roles do not have username password like an IAM user has. AWS credentials can be retrieved here like an IAM user credentials. The permission of an IAM role can be granted or assigned to an EC2 instance. IAM roles and instance profiles provide enhanced security because these structures provide temporary AWS credentials. These temporary AWS credentials are made available by EC2 metadata service. Let's move to the lab and understand the concepts better. First of all, you have to create a root account for AWS console. I have already an account so I will log in into it and then will configure AWS IAM. You can find IAM service in security, identity, and compliance service section. Click on IAM. Now you are at IAM console. See at the region section it is denoting global that means IAM is a global service. At IAM user link you can see a number, that number is your ID number. It will be required to log into the console. Let's customize it, so that it can be easy to remember. Click on customize and I will give it name as Ether India. Now you can see the number is replaced with the name that we gave it right now. So our first step in creating IAM is to delete root access key if it is available. So I will go to security settings and select public key. There you can find a key value, I will delete it and get back to the IAM console dashboard. As you can see earlier on the first option there was an error icon, now you will see a green tick over there. Now we have 4 more settings left to configure IAM. Let's move to multi-factor authentication. This setting helps in login your account securely as every time you login you have to give a MFA code that is generated on your mobile phone app. Let's start managing it. You will need to install an application for creating these codes. I have Android phone so I will download Google Authenticator app from Play Store. I have already this app in phone. If you are new you have to install in your phone. When you have installed in your phone you have to click next on manage MFA tab, 
it will generate a barcode box, you have to scan the barcode from your app or you can also use the access key. As my app is already using another AWS account so it's not creating by scan, I will use the access to authenticate the MFA. I will copy the access key and will enter into my phone app with the account name, as you can see on your screen. Once it is done, it will generate codes, and on MFA console it will ask two authentication codes, first of all enter the first code as you can see, After some time this code will disappear on app, then a new code is generated, enter this code into second box and click on next. Now you have successfully created MFA. And when you go back to dashboard you can see a green tick against the MFA. Now we will create users and group for our root account. On user option there is manage users button. Click on it. Here you can create users. I am creating a user with the name user. Then there are two options for creating user, you can check both and provide password to it. I gave a password and click on next to group. Every user is a part of one or more group. Here there is no group available. I will create a new group of developers and then you have to give group policy to it. In the policy name I will give administrative policy to it. You can provide any other policy as well depending on the purpose of group. After giving group policy click on create group. It will create user and group for you. When you create an user it will generate an access key. This access key is generated only once. If you lose it you won't get it back. So it's better to download it and keep it safe. It will be used to login and authenticating your first time login. Then move to the dashboard on the dashboard you can see you have created your user and grow push successfully. Now we will apply I am password policy. Click on manage password policy. Here you can configure your password creating policy. You can provide the length of password, its structure and many more things, once you have made changes. Click on apply password policy and move to dashboard where you can see all the settings has been done successfully. All the security features are green now. You can do more to the IAM depending on your need. These are the basic tasks. Hope you all had a very great lab session on identity access management. So this was all about in our AWS sessions. The content covered in this entire video series is in accordance with Solution Architect Certification Exam. Thank you.